This is the Risk Grand Novice series. Taking a bit. Where I, a Grandmaster on the Free For All ladder, share a lower ranked game. From this, hopefully more people will see the game of Risk. Newer players can improve their play and maybe we'll get to see something crazy. The main thing you uh, should take from this and the main thing I want you to take from this is you do not have to be number one to have fun. So get out there and play some Risk. The more people out there playing Risk and having fun, the better it is for the entire community. And that's what we want to see. So we're going to encourage that. We're going to provide some tips to improve some play. And we are going to be playing the classic fixed settings. This is something that if you're a newer player, this is what you're going to be comfortable playing. This is what you're going to hop in on and play. Um, you might be intimidated by other maps. You might be intimidated by progressive cards. Um, there might be, you might be intimidated by other game modes besides the classic uh, world domination game mode. So we're going to roll ourselves out here so we can hopefully be removed from the game, have as little impact on the game as possible so we can see it played as newer players play, which we have it open right now to novice to intermediates. And this lobby filled up pretty fast. So I think these people hopped on this is one of the first games they saw available and they hopped on in and here we are ready to play. So hopefully these are some peppy individuals. We see these turns are all going by very quickly. Very impressive. The decision making coming out from all these players, the white player very quickly taking Australia turn one. So you really need to get those smaller bonuses early if you're going to have them. Um, it's not a necessity, but considering the smaller bonuses what you're trying to do is take them early and you're trying to from there leverage that that early troop income which is smaller than when individuals eventually take the large bonuses so you're trying to leverage that early troop income for an advantage that puts you into a more even mid game with the other players who are going to be taking the larger bonuses now in the late game, it can be a bit of a disadvantage, but it definitely sets you up well for the early to mid game. So the red player looking um, a bit out there, and actually I do really like that they uh, fortified that seven in, and now they look more ready to make a claim over a continent, which looks like they are going to be making a claim over Europe. The black player is going to be making a claim, a, a strong, very aggressive claim, as you can see, over Africa, white player in Australia. The green player looks like they're going for South America, and actually the black player could have taken Africa right now, but they choose not to take the role, perhaps not want to look too strong, too aggressive, or not wanting to make themselves too vulnerable too quickly. So what they might end up doing is perhaps they'll take this five, so maybe they'll They'll add one to this three to make it a four, attack down, add the rest of this five, attack here, split, and then fortify that four into Africa so they have a stronger guard. The green player going for South America, the purple player going for North America. Let's roll ourselves down. And let's see what the white player chooses to do with this upcoming though not permanent, not, not guaranteed permanent advantage of their extra bonus troops. What are they going to choose to do with them? Right now, it looks like they're going to take a not 100% roll, but it is successful, and they're going to roll. It actually turns out very well. I don't think they lost anything on that, and they're going to fortify here together. They start consolidating their troops, which they don't have a lot floating throughout the map, but they do have some troops out there uh, in the map, little satellite areas of troops. And is the green player going to be aggressive? Are they going to take South America? I don't like it because you'll be very vulnerable at that point. But they are over attacking a bit right now. That was not a necessary attack. Looks like they could be lining up for a conflict in North America. Um, I think at a higher level, perhaps individuals could work together 
to get that four into South America, but I think at a higher level, they wouldn't even want that four in South America because you're going to want an external stack as a South America player so you can continue to take cards. Everyone is taking their turns relatively quickly. Good to see. Say that now in the black player. We do have 90 second turn timers, I believe. Let me check that. We do. So 90 second turn timer shouldn't be too intimidating to newer players, but um, and looks like they do kind of do what I say. I said they should add here, attack down so they could fortify in Africa. Now I think they should also take Africa this turn if they can, but with that five here from white, that can be um, a bit scary and maybe you don't want to risk that right now because the white player is in a position to to uh, bully other players if they want to. What does the purple player do? They're thinking. They're thinking about this potential conflict with green. That they do have a very strong, a pretty strong claim to North America and you could see them taking it very soon. I don't like the way they've gone about doing this. I think they could have taken that seven right here and attacked the three, which is 100% roll. They could have had this five attack up, though they may not want to open the red 10. And then they could have had the uh, prepped for adding troops down and taking the continent the turn after that. Although... Although, I do not mind having a 5 here, stopping that 4 from getting in. You don't want any more troops in North America that aren't yours, that have to be. So, I do like putting that 5 there, a 4 plus whatever, the, the 3 troops the green player will gain very soon. I don't think uh, that's coming through that 5. So, if you're the green player, I think uh, maybe you take South Africa and you just hope. Because right now you're in a, a vulnerable situation where you're either going to have to take, make an aggressive move, or you're going to hope that the board retain, uh, becomes more volatile and other players um, aren't doing as well. So they, uh, because they're attacking each other. So that lack of uh, continent you're holding isn't that big of a negative. So the green player has to ask themselves, are they going for troop preservation? Or are they going for troop income? And uh, adding any troops into North America right now is a huge risk because you should not expect to hold them, especially if purple has a trade on three. So very interesting move by the green player and I do not agree with it. The red player slowly expanding Really working towards taking their continents. Be very iffy to take their continent. Black not having a continent yet. Right there, neighbors. Your siren outside. No one needs that much help yet, I don't think. Emergency services are not needed in this game. Although, the black player, the second player to take the continent, will the white player push in, be aggressive, and say, I'm not going to let you hold that. They absolutely could do that. But then, what they're doing is, they're putting themselves in a situation where if other players begin to secure continents, the white player can't, can't, be, can't police all of the other continents. That's just not going to work. So the white player has to ask themselves, are they going to start conflict with the black player? Um, I think, oh, look, I only have one continent left. I, I expect to be removed very soon. I do not know what the white player is going to do. They seem to be, they have the indicators of a newer player and they have locked their stack in. That's one indicator. They have this border, which I don't want to judge people by the cosmetics they choose to use, but this is a, a border that I've seen a lot more newer players using because it's a border that you get by doing the 
initial introduction to the game and that is a a new change that's that's a new update so they have some indicators that they are a newer player and they do indeed let the black player hold their continent So it hasn't been too particularly spicy this game so far it has been uh players have been taking their turns uh relatively quickly which i'm happy about that but no one has been um we haven't seen a lot of direct aggression between individuals but we may see that coming up as players start securing their continents and they we start looking at potential card blocks we start looking at um the difference in troop income making other players stronger than um than one another and actually the red player locking their 17 in it is a threat stack so at this moment i don't like doing that and i'll tell you why i think other players at this level might not understand a threat stack so what this means is i'm not putting any guard on my borders but if you break me if you break me i'll go into you that's what this means and so other players might not understand that not only that this 17 if placed right here still has access to the world so you might be thinking well oh so see now we are going to find out will red follow up on that threat uh if the threat stack is an actual threat then uh i can understand why people might not respect you people are going to push you in the game not they don't respect you as an individual but they don't they don't respect this threat. So the red player now has to ask themselves, am I going to follow up on this threat? And if I'm the red player, maybe I do, maybe I don't. So if you do, you and black are going to be battling with each other while the other players start securing their continents. Number one, there's that. And number two, uh, if you, on the other side, if you choose to let it go, then maybe there's a chance for more uh, friendly relations and working together and growing strong together. So if I'm the red player, what I do is I take this 17, I attack here, resecure my continent, and then I don't lock my stack again. What I do is is now I've got this 17 plus whatever troop income I'm going to get uh, a stack right here for it. And if the black player breaks me again, then then I have to be willing to go to war. So the green player in a position to secure their continent. They have 100% roll on that three stack of the red player. They could absolutely take that role. We have now seen that the black player, if it doesn't understand or doesn't respect threat stacks. So putting borders, hard borders up against your opponents, I completely understand doing that. And actually this is, we are seeing the first act of, of really consequential direct aggression we know there are going to be consequences to that action from the green player breaking the purple player because that hurts the purple player so, so much and puts the purple player in a very vulnerable vulnerable position because they're not going to have a trade and they're not going to be able to resecure their continent this next turn. And actually, that's threat, that was a very real threat stack. <laughs> um, so the actually, the, the red player could have eliminated the black player if they really wanted to, and they're putting themselves in a position where if the black player doesn't have a trade on four, it's not a big trade on four, uh, the black player will be eliminated. So um, while it wasn't the moderate reply to black's aggression that I suggested, it looks like it's worked out, at least the battle between the two, and actually the black player does have a big trade on four. I can only imagine that is going into the red player. So like I said, one of the potential consequences of this happening is that both of you are going to become weak while others become strong um, it's better to become strong together than it is to become weak together so um it is we're going to see it unfold we're going to see what happens because right now the white player and i think the strongest has the strongest potential for their position um unfortunately how they're actually um, making their position come about, they're actually executing their position, is a bit poor. They could be way more aggressive right now. Um, they have five cards, so potentially a big trade. They could have been in a position if that 12 was active to be much more aggressive on the map. 
Um, so I'd like to see them move that 12 out. And while some players might not understand a threat stack, reality is you don't have to put a heavy guard on Australia all the time. What you can do is leave essentially a threat stack. You put yourself in a position where if someone wants to break Australia, uh, you're in a position to respond right away, either resecure or retaliate. So that is not what the white player has done, and that's okay. Um, but it is an option for them if they want to try and uh, pursue that in the future. So the white player here helping the purple player, interestingly, they did not need to do that. I don't know what they're doing here. I guess they could keep attacking. Are they trying to secure? Okay, so they are feeding almost the purple player. The They have used their initial troop advantage and they are lining up on the purple player. So it looks very grim for the purple player. They're going to have to hope they have a trade on three or a trade on four. The green player probably going to want to take a card and the easiest card for them to take or attempt to take right now is going to be that eight. But maybe they'll just choose the card skip, which I absolutely agree with right now. They're putting themselves in a very strong uh, position to take at least second place. So let's see what the red player chooses to do here. Continuing to attack the black player. Perhaps they're going to take Africa. It is an option, although the black player could choose to break it. Lining up on the black player, perhaps the red player has a trade on three and knows that they'll be able to use it to take out the black player their next turn. We have seen a lot of direct in your face aggression as we've entered into this mid game. Looks like the black player is actually going to be botting out. No. No, they are still here. They are still here, and perhaps they're only. The only thing they can do is they can break Africa or they can roll that nine stack. Either of those are options, but the confidence from the red player with their emoting suggests to me that the red player might have a trade on three. Not only breaking the a red player's continent. Now in the way, if the white player wanted to secure Aust uh, Asia, and if the white player has a trade on three, black player potentially could be eliminated right now. White player, or purple player, I think very smart, just lining themselves up saying, if you're going to hit me, go ahead and hit me, but you should probably let me out. And the white player does not do that. The white player does not let them resecure their continent. They stay in the face of the purple player. Green player now has an easy card to take in Africa. Let's see if they sit there. I'd like to see them sit there right now. They need to start prepping themselves on uh, taking other players out for their cards and then getting ready to go into the 1v1 with white because that is how the game is looking right now. Red player did. We were able to read the red player did have a large trade on three. That is going to be the end of the game for the black player. Now, the red player could attempt to resecure Asia right now. Might actually like to see that. So they do not, but they prep themselves to be able to secure it the next go around. Although I would not anticipate white letting that stand. Purple player now sitting on four cards. The white player on four cards themselves. They may choose right now to take out the purple player, use that for another trade, and get ready to potentially sweep the board. White player taking about 20 to 30 seconds figuring out what they're going to do. They did not use a trade on four, whether they had it or not. So now they need to, yeah, so they realize, oh no, 
the purple player might have a trade on for. I need to get out of here. Now, if they really wanted to, they could have made that stack big enough that even a trade wouldn't have broken it. So interesting decision. It is the safe decision. And actually it looks like the green player perhaps going to be removing the purple player. Are they going to be do that, doing that? That would make them very, very vulnerable. And no, they're actually going to choose to take Africa. So this is very interesting. If we can see the red player and the green player, no, they're not going to take Africa, but they're going to take a lot of territory and perhaps get ready to secure it their next go around. If the red player and green player can work together, they could overcome the white player. It's not like the white player is in a hugely dominating position right now. That's not it. The white player and the green player are actually relatively even, although the green player is slightly behind, has less cards and less territory. Um, the red and green player combined would be able to take out the white player. So resecuring of Asia. No, resecuring of Europe with the threat stack again from the red player. Are people going to uh take what happened with the black player? more seriously now i don't know but uh they probably should probably should this is a very real threat back purple player now securing their continent can the white player play board police for everybody that's what we talked about being so risky by not letting other players hold the continents and getting strong with them did the white player act fast enough, utilize their advantage soon enough? They are in a position where they could try and take out the red player, which would give them another trade, and they could choose to go somewhere from there. I really like that idea. And that is the one they are going to execute. Great. Great position to be in. So right now, the white player needs to line themselves up, and looks like they are doing that to be able to uh, break the purple player. Although they should expect the green player to then in turn hit them. The white player continuing to leverage that early advantage. What do they choose to do? It is a big trade. And they are going to break the purple player, which I think is a good idea. But now they need to start worrying about the 2v1 is the purple player certainly about to break the white player the purple player could actually re-secure north america and break the white player while the green player secures africa and then we have a very interesting close to um not even but close to fair looking in game every player will have a chance to take first in this game Every player remaining right now. <laughs> so when I think every player who was here in this game had that that opportunity. And they did not. Um, it didn't go their way. The black player and the red player were each in positions where if they had worked together, the game could have certainly been in their hands. Purple player now no longer needing to break Asia because the green player has done it for them. How does the white player respond? The white player, if they really wanted to, could break South America. They could actually break both continents right now, which would be amazing to see and would be a, a major dominating move. The white player perhaps in a position to remove eventually both players in the 2v1. So they could have definitely had their cards differently uh, or placed their troops, distributed their troops differently. They could have retaken. Oh, and it looks like they actually forgot to break North America. Very unfortunate. That is going to be allowing the green player to decide, am I going to let the purple player hold? And I would bet that they are. So this is going into the 2v1 situation where the white player holding the weakest of the bonus troops coming in. The advantage, that early advantage as we start working towards the late game going away.
for the white player. Very unfortunate. Looks like the green player actually trusting the purple player to not break. Very interesting move here. And the purple player will not break. They will keep their uh, nine stack locked in North America. How does the white player play this out? They're 22 locked right now. Very unfortunate. This is definitely a, it looks like the white player will not forget again to break North America. And the white player trying to figure out this puzzle. You know, I bet, I bet they, they feel like they have a bit of a puzzle in their head and they're thinking, how do I solve it? And the reality is this is a tough one. This is a tough one, and I don't think 2v1ing at this point is the way to go. These players are going to be having trades pretty soon. Is going to make the troop disparity grow even smaller between the white player and the purple player and the green player. Green player, though, leaving their stack locked, all players right now have some amount of troops they cannot access, they cannot utilize right now just because they're 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 stuck. Green player perhaps thinking. They have a place to take a card. They have one place. They do take a card. And they will have a guaranteed trade on five coming up. Can the white player eliminate them before that? No, they cannot. So we're seeing that advantage slowly slip away. The white player absolutely should not anticipate holding Asia. And they probably should break the green player. They need to think about this game now, not only strategy wise, as in what's going on on the board, as far as things moving around, their pathing, their troop income. They need to start thinking about this game socially. So you'll notice the green player and the purple player aren't hitting each other, you know, and, and you want to change that. So. That is something the white player uh, needs to consider. Because right now, they are not on the path to taking the W. And a huge part of this game is social. So, if the green player chooses to do. Purple player, very thoughtful about what they're going to do next. Um, an individual botting right now would completely change the way this game looks. So we have neutral AI on. So if someone bots, they're just going to stack. And that, especially with this trade, is going to distribute a, a large amount of troops over the territory that the purple player has, making North America like a no-go zone. So it's going to come down to between the green player and the white player who can strike first who keeps those troops active and right now it could go either way so this 17 needs to not be opened by the white player so what i'd like to see right now is yep so see we have that neutral ai coming in distributing those troops across all the territories of the purple player 
And so I want to see this five come down here to the Middle East and then come to East Africa, breaking that and not hit North Africa because North Africa will open Brazil. You absolutely do not want that. So this is, I'm thinking, the wrong move for the... Uh, just, I do not agree with this move, but what are you going to do? So actually, potentially, the white player was looking at a card block, but they're... Unless they get amazing dice, they have to get perfect dice right now. Is the two-on-one going to work? It does not work. So what the white player is planning on doing is putting down a card block. Oh, the card block would not have likely been successful just because the red player is going to be having it, or the, the red player is gone. The white player is going to be having a trade on five right now. So we'll see if the green player, though they should lose this, in a 1v1 where everything comes out evenly between the two because the green player um, is at a huge disadvantage right now. 38 troops behind now in the card trades and has way less territories than the white player. So that's going to be troop income that the white player is going to have just from holding so much of the board. The white player, although now evening up a bit, 27 to 22 on the troop count going to be up to, to the white player to number one do they have a trade do they have a trade on three and number two can they break all the continents done correctly and done with luck we may see those continents broken so what uh is the white player going to do they're really in a tough position and looking much more even right now Perhaps I shouldn't have said they're behind on the card rotation, the green player, because they're currently both sitting at three cards, but um, the white player more likely to have that trade sooner, although not that much more likely. The purple player perhaps has returned. The purple player has returned, which I think is unfortunate for the two players that just went into each other very hard um so the game continuing right now so one of the troubles is we can't we can't assume that the purple player left the game on purpose so the other players would attack each other assuming that they could take first place after defeating the bot we can't assume that right that's not fair but can't also rule it out either the very real possibility that the purple player did this intentionally Although, you know, you got to you gotta play the game as it is, and this is the game that we are in. So um, had they played it safer, the white player and green player, they could have waited a bit longer to see what happened with the purple player. Because um, eventually with neutral AI, the bot will surrender. So... These players could have waited out that 10 minutes, chose not to do that. And I think in most games, realistically, players aren't going to choose to do that. But it was an option. It could have been a safer play. And it's, it's not what we saw utilized here. So as long as the purple player stays, they're now in a position to take the game. They have a strong hold on North America. And uh, should be their game now. if they're still here they are they should break the green player down here and push through um, but instead only attacking the white player very interesting um, this is going to give the green and white player an opportunity to turn on uh, turn on the purple player. So do they choose to do that? Or does the green player choose to work with the purple player? Kind of keep that social you and I versus him, us versus them uh, situation going on. Uh, where then green can at least secure second place. Or does the white player actually feed purple? Or does the white player feed green to purple? A lot of options here in this game. Um, definitely some lessons to be learned. Um, one of those lessons. 
here is there's two for sure one of them is don't trust when people bought out that is that is a hard lesson and an unfortunate lesson to have to learn and the other lesson to have to learn here is and i completely forgot it so one of them was the bot out and uh i guess i can just pretend like there was only one lesson <laughs> um but yeah so now purple player looking like they might be lining up to break the bonus of the green player why not who's gonna stop them oh so i remember the other lesson their lesson is social so the other lesson is um aside from the bot lesson which we learned because uh, from the purple player coming back the other lesson is social uh that is an aspect of the game that can't be, be ignored and sometimes it can't be overcome like the white player tried to do here so right now because of uh white's 2v1 it's looking like the white player will not be taking first place perhaps will be taking second place which is nothing to to look down upon that's great six people entered a game normally hoping to take first or at least do the best that they can so in this game i entered it knowing that uh, it was a very real possibility and actually the white player interesting turning on the purple player perhaps saying to green let's work together on the purple player which i really like that um so in a normal game you know you have six people they all enter wanting to take first or at least do the best they can and um when six people go in with a goal and only one can achieve it being the number two person that's awesome that's nothing to uh laugh at so the purple player overextending a bit and actually now putting themselves a bit in that 2v1 position what can they do here um they need to choose a player and then they need to go hard in on that player so that is the one thing the white player didn't do they decided to 2v1 when they should have 1v1 ignoring the other player and then taking that into another 1v1 after that so they were not in a position where they could 2v1 yet they just weren't big enough or at least they were not able to execute that 2v1 so they should have been considering the 1v1 into the 1v1 actually i'm gonna go grab a drink of water because my throat this has been going on for some time i'm gonna grab a drink of water hold on Instead of drink of water, but I actually grab some apple juice and actually the white player perhaps having a trade going in. Let's look at what we had right now. It looks like the white player had a trade. Uh, yeah, they did. So they got eight troops for holding so many territories. They had a eight trade after that and they were able take out the green player off the back of that unfortunately not able to break any of the bonuses from the purple player so the purple player is in a position right now with more troops uh and if they break the continents of the other player or at least at least africa and asia they will be in a position where they have more troop income you drink my apple juice Whew. So I actually did get water along with my apple juice, so I'm now going to take it there. Woo. Okay, post apple juice, post water. Right now, it's going to depend on if the white player has a trade on for and the size of that trade, because right now, the purple player pushing the game with the momentum towards themselves. How does the white player respond? So in the 1v1, which unfortunately the white player didn't set themselves up to do this after taking out the green player, the most important thing 
number one, and especially a fixed 1v1, is to break the bonuses of the other player. Let's see what the purple player can do. I imagine if all those bonuses can't be broken, which is going to be very hard for the white player to do, even with a trade. Not impossible, but hard. So it is going to be a big trade that is very fortunate. It is the white player's turn to hit back. What do they choose to do? So what you can do right now is you can go 16 into the 2, into the 2, into the 1, the 1, the 1, the 1, boom. You've broken all the continents, you've secured your continent, and you're going to need to attack out a little bit more after that because of the territory advantage. The purple player holding such a large amount of territory compared to you is not going to be great because you get bonus troops from having all that territory. So definitely needs to even that out a bit more. But in the long term, especially uh, with card luck, which hopefully the white player will be able to secure, um, the white player could pull, up, pull out the W, although it is not looking likely. See how the purple player chooses to respond. But I think they have the idea. I think especially with the uh, six trade coming in, they can eventually reestablish uh, their four continent hold that sounds crazy to say but a four continent hold and they will be able to slowly secure this game i suspect it will be over in the next few turns the white player perhaps making the mistake of not having the seven active although i'm not sure that would have helped very much it looks like this will be the end of the game for the white player hard fought and well played Let's see what the white player chooses to do here they do break one continent but that is likely going to be the end do they activate their seven they do not 19 19 troops for the purple player well Played, says the white player. Um, sometimes you lose connection and you come back. And you can't say the purple player uh, wasn't a good... Oh, so they actually... I was going to say you can't say they weren't a good player this game just because um, they did make some good plays. They were very resilient uh, on taking and securing North America. Um, but then they do some bad pathing and they trap their stack. Um, but will likely still go in the way of the purple player this game. Going back to those two lessons to take, those two main ones I wanted to mention is, is the social aspect and the uh, not trusting all the time when someone bots out. Um, there's definitely something to learn, those two things to take from this game. And if you're watching this game, you think, my games look like this. My games go 48 minutes, 45 minutes, 50 minutes, somewhere in there. And leveraging your advantage is hard. Um, closing out a game can be hard. Working with other players can be hard. Um, I completely understand that. And then having to wait out the white player who is, who is, uh, either has left the game or is stalling. I assume they've left the game. We'll find out in a few seconds after the, the 60 seconds has ticked over. So it looks like they did leave the game. They're not stalling. They've just left. And uh, that means it is all but a guaranteed win from the purple player. This is not a bot out. The purple player needs to be suspicious, suspicious of just because they're so strong. Um, so definitely take notes and think, how could this game have been uh, ended sooner? How from from leveraging that initial advantage, right? And also from the social aspect, if players had worked together, think back to the red player and the black player. They could have grown strong together. They were securing continents, larger continents, and they could have then together worked against the other players. That was definitely an option for them. So um that social aspect so strong in this game. You can see the purple player didn't win this game because they were the best mechanically. 
right? They didn't win because they slow crawled and they made sure everything was perfect. We saw pathing mistakes. We saw, you know, troops not active. And the purple player throwing out the thanks right there, taking the W. Um, the purple player won this game for, for many other reasons than just being mechanically the best. And um, that speaks to how versatile uh, of a, a skill set, tool set you need to have when you go into this game. So let's see what ranks we have here. Intermediate for purple player, beginner for the white player, intermediate, beginner and novice for green, red, and black, respectively. So this has been the Risk Grand Novice series. Get out there, play some Risk, and have some fun.